Hello and welcome. It is time once again to try to fix something. And today on the workbench, a PS5 digital. And I believe this is a dead, dead, no power. Um, let's get to it. I see that I've got power connected. I didn't bother connecting the HDMI because I don't think it does anything. Rather dead. So that's what we're starting with. PS5 digital. No power, it does not smell horribly like some of them had, so maybe this is going to be a reasonably clean one. Uh, I have not looked to see if it's been opened before, so that's our next step. Well, would you look at that? It looks to be just pristine as from the factory. Never been opened, no screws missing. Excellent. Gotta love that. What model is this one? I didn't really notice. See if we can read this. Oops. I know it's a digital edition, but which one is it? 1115B. Okay. 1115B. Uh, let's get on into it then. It hasn't been opened before. Looking absolutely beautiful inside. No signs of any kind of bug activity. No signs of really any dust either, kind of think of it. Has this thing ever turned on? Hmm. All right, when well, I've pulled out the entire heat sink circuit board assembly as one to get down to this power supply, let's see if we just have a power supply issue. It's kind of what I'm thinking. This is just a dead supply. I don't know that though. Nope, not a dead supply. So we have a main board problem. Okay, uh, I guess I need to take that on apart and get that on the you know, inside on the workbench. Hmm. Well, here we are at the workbench inside, and we're going to take a look at this PS5 digital motherboard, an EDM020 board. And it's, of course, it was a rather dead one, didn't do anything, no beeps, nothing. So I think what I'd like to do is hook up my bench supply and just see how much current it draws. Let's just see how dead it is here. Alrighty, make sure our polarity is right and enable our supply over here. I'm set by 12 volts at 1 amp. Shouldn't be drawing any more than that. And let's see what happens. Whoa, whoa, okay. Uh, she did draw an amp. That means we have a dead short on our 12 volt rail. Okay. This could be interesting. Yeah, I've never seen. I haven't had to deal with one yet that had a twelve volt, had a twelve volt direct twelve volt short. So yeah, this could be fun. Uh, let me get you set up in a in a holder for this camera, and let's find this short. Okay, so we have a twelve volt rail short. Like I mentioned, I have not encountered one of those yet. Plenty of other shorts, but not one of those. Not a direct one. I want to measure this resistance. I'll mill that out. How low can you go? Untangle these cords right across these terminals. 0.35 ohms. And that's after I've zeroed out my leads. Let me show you. Yeah. 0.35. Okay. I haven't, I haven't even had a chance to look around the board to see if I see anything, you know, jumping out at me obvious. I know from other people's experiences I've read about that this in here can give you a 12 volt short to ground. These uh, MOSFET switching devices that generate the APU voltage they can cause that and I'm sure a capacitor somewhere could cause that so probably voltage injection is probably not a bad idea but I need to make sure I don't have a short through to my APU or something because I don't want to force 12 volts into that Let's see. 
what is my APU resistance like right here is that meter yeah even in the shot wasn't sure eight ohms that's that's is that right yeah I think it probably is right this should be the lower one here maybe 0.35 hmm Is that the exact same as the resistance we're getting here? Mmm. Exactly the same. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a short somewhere on the APU rail. We need to isolate it in some way. And I want to think... Yeah, right here. This coil here feeds all of that. So if I lift this one, that should should tell us if it's you know APU core voltage related or something else on the board. So I think it's my first step. I think I may just remove this coil and let's just see if our uh, short goes away. Little flux. I think I'm going to use a little bit of low melt there. I happen to have my large tip on. Little low melt there and there. Maybe get some tweezers to grab it with. I don't think it's quite ready to come off, but uh, there, there we go. The beauty of low melt. Now. Has our short changed? Not sure why I bothered to turn off my meter. Null that out. Do we still have a short? No. 280k ohms so our shorts gonna be in here somewhere yeah capacitive charge up now it's in the mega ohms it reached 11 mega ohms so anyway we have a short right here and looks like we're getting shorted straight into the APU I hope not so what I'm going to do, I think, is inject voltage right in just in this area, maybe a volt or something like that. See if we can see anything getting hot. Unfortunately, this stuff is very well uh, heat sinked, making it really hard to spot short sometimes. It's got this thermal putty on it, which is going to make it impossible. So, what I may have to do <clears throat> start lifting coils, try to isolate it down to one of the ICs. Well, I think this thermal putty is going to have to come off anyway, just to, just to be able to see what we're doing. It's going to have to come off. Let me get set up. Well, we'll inject some voltage and just to see if we can see anything getting warm. I don't think we'll be able to tell, though. All right, the thermal cam is set up. Um, I have my bench power supply set for 1 volt, 2 amps of current draw. Um, so let's just see. I, I'm, I've soldered a wire to where I lifted that coil. Let's just see if anything gets warm. Well, if 
I can get my bench supply to work here. Select that. There we go. One and a half amps. So far, I think I see the CPU warming up a little there. But not really anything in the area of our coils. And look at the other side of the board. Of course, I have not removed this thermal. Yeah, there's the there's the CPU warming up. I'm going to back this up, my injection voltage down to 9 tenths. Since that's pretty much what the APU runs at. Not sure if I'm going to see anything for all this thermal putty. All right, well, the thermal cameras have limited use right now because is such such large heat sink in the area and we have a whole bunch of circuits that are parallel like every one of these things you know the uh, you can see where I had my wire my where I was injecting the voltage right there but this stuff is paralleled here's the other side of the board what's most likely happened is one of these MOSFETs has shorted but which one it's all paralleled so you'll measure a short everywhere so I think what I'm going to have to do is remove these coils on this side and on the other side just to isolate the different stages of this. Now this is a different rail up here, these larger coils. That's reading like, I don't know, 8 ohms or 4 ohms or something. But this is what we're going to have to try to isolate because I think one of these MOSFETs down in here has shorted. So hopefully if we if we lift these, we can then isolate things enough to narrow down which one has shorted.
All right, well, I have lifted all those small coils on both sides of the board, as you can see. And let's see what our resistance is now. Oh, this is where I was injecting. So this would have been 12 volts here. That's This is the where the first coil was, right here. And this is basically 12 volts coming in here. And this is where it would have made it into the APU, you know, core voltage area. Um, and I, we lifted that early on, just for isolation. And this point here, well, let me get where you can see it. This point here, I'm in resistance mode, is now in the k-ohms. That's 2 k-ohms in climbing. So after lifting that, our short is gone. So what does that mean? That means that we have, I think, a shorted MOSFET. Which one, though? Let's see if I can flip this over. Yeah. Like so. And let's see if we can switch to the microscope view, because it's rather small down in there. And so there are one, two, three, four, five, six that we are concerned with. Okay. And what I want to look at is um, I'm in diode now, diode mode on my meter now. Uh, just looking at this, make sure everything's in the shot. Of course, here's one of the coils I lifted over on the right. So this is the output. You can see all these all these leads are connected to the output side of this uh, MOSFET. So I want to say this is the in si input side. See what this filter cap is right here, and this large wide trace down here. So let's check in to out, because I'm afraid the short we were seeing was the APU, but we shouldn't be seeing that. You know, not normally. You shouldn't see it like that, but. What that tells me is I think we've had a MOSFET short from input to output, which is not good. All right, there I'm getting, I'm in diode mode, two volts in, in, in climbing. Let's go to the next one. In to out. About the same, two volt diode rating and climbing. Next one. Yep. About two volts climbing. And then next, two volts. And the next, two volts. And the next, we have a short. Let me get the make sure it's in the picture. The very last one appears to have shorted from input side over here to output side going through the coil onto the APU on the right there. So, did we kill our APU? There's only one way to find out. Uh, we could actually lift this, and it would probably run. It's not ideal, though. These are basically parallel stages to, for, uh, for current capacity. Um, but I've got a donor board, so we'll just go ahead and swap this thing out. Let me clean off some more of this blue goop under here, underneath there. We'll swap this one out from a donor, and then we'll find out if our APU has survived or not. That's where we are.
Well, our MOSFET has been changed. Uh, all of our coils have been reinstalled on both sides of the board. So it's time to go outside and put this board back in the chassis and see if our APU has survived this uh, traumatic event. All right, we are reassembled enough to test this PS5. Uh, I think. Um, yeah. So, did our APU survive? Blue light. No smoke. Nothing on the screen yet. Lots of flashing blue light. Oh, look at there. It did survive. That's a beautiful sight. Okay, well, let me get this thing fully reassembled, I think, and we will give it a good test out. How's that sound? I just like seeing it back alive again. I thought it was a goner. Well, this PS5 Digital is fully reassembled and appears to be running well. It is currently downloading a software update, and hopefully that will get us uh, fully updated and working perfectly. Well, I hope you enjoyed this repair. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, and I will see you in the very next repair. That's all for now.